Praise the Lord. According to one year Bible reading plan day 128, we have Nehemiah chapters 4 to 6. Nehemiah chapter 4. When Sanballat heard that we Jews had begun rebuilding the wall, he became furious and began to ridicule us. In front of his companions and the Samaritan troops, he said, What do these miserable Jews think they're doing? Do they intend to rebuild the city? Do they think that by offering the sacrifices they can finish the work in one day? Can they make building stones out of heaps of burnt rubble? Tobiah was standing there beside him and he added, What kind of wall could they ever build? Even a fox could knock it down. I prayed. Hear how they make fun of us, O God. Let their ridicule fall on their own heads. Let them be robbed of everything they have, and let them be taken as prisoners to a foreign land. Don't forgive the evil they do and don't forget their sins, for they have insulted us who are building. So we went on rebuilding the wall, and soon it was half its full height because the people were eager to work. Sinbalat, Tobiah and the people of Arabia, Ammon and Ashtod heard that we were making progress in rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem and that the gaps in the walls were being closed and they became very angry. So they plotted together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. But we prayed to our God and kept men on guard against them day and night. The people of Judah had a song they sang. We grow weak carrying burdens. There's so much rubble to take away. How can we build a wall today? Our enemies thought we would not see them or know what was happening until they were already upon us killing us and putting an end to our work. But time after time, Jews who were living among our enemies came to warn us of the plans our enemies were making against us. So I armed the people with swords, spears and bows and stationed them by clans behind the wall. Wherever it was still unfinished, I saw that the people were worried, so I said to them and to their leaders and officials, don't be afraid of our enemies. Remember how great and terrifying the Lord is and fight for your relatives, your children, your wives and your homes. Our enemies heard that we had found out what they were plotting and they realized that God had defeated their plans. Then all of us went back to rebuilding the wall. From then on, half of my wind worked and half stood guard wearing coats of armour and armed with spears, shields and bows. And our leaders gave their full support to the people who were rebuilding the wall. Even those who carried building materials, worked with one hand and kept a weapon in the other. And everyone who was building kept a sword strapped to their waist. The man who was to sound the alarm on the bugle stayed with me. I told the people and their officials and leaders, The work is spread out over such a distance that we are widely separated from one another on the wall. If you hear the bugle, gather around me. Our God will fight for us. So every day from dawn until the stars came out at night, half of us worked on the wall while the other half stood guard with spurs. During this time, I told the men in charge that they and all their helpers had to stay in Jerusalem at night so that we could guard the city at night as well as work in the daytime. I didn't take off my clothes even at night. Neither did any of my companions nor my servants nor my bodyguards. And we all kept our weapons at hand. Nehemiah chapter 5 some time later, many of the people, both men and women, began to complain against the other Jews. Some said, We have large families. We need grain to keep us alive. Others said, 
we have had to mortgage our fields and vineyards and houses to get enough grain to keep us from starving. Still others said, we had to borrow money to pay the royal tax on our fields and vineyards. We are of the same race as the other Jews. Aren't our children just as good as theirs? But we have to make our slaves of our children. Some of our daughters have already been sold as slaves. We are helpless because our fields and vineyards have been taken away from us. When I heard their complaints, I grew angry and decided to act. I denounced the leaders and officials of the people and told them, You are oppressing your own relatives. I called a public assembly to deal with the problem and said, As far as we have been able, we have been buying back our Jewish relatives who had to sell themselves to foreigners. Nav, you are forcing your own relatives to sell themselves to you, their own people. The leaders were silent and could find nothing to say. Then I said, What you are doing is wrong. You ought to obey God and do what's right. Then you would not give our enemies, the Gentiles, any reason to ridicule us. I have let the people borrow money and grain from me, and so have my companions and those who work for me. Now let's give up all our claims to repayment, cancel all the debts they owe you, money or grain or wine or olive oil, and give them back their fields, vineyards, olive groves and houses right now. The leaders replied, We'll do as you say. We'll give the property back and not try to recollect the debts. I called in the priests and made the leaders swear in front of them to keep the promise they had just made. Then I took up the sash of swearing around my waist and shook it out. This is how God will shake any of you who don't keep your promise. I said, God will take away your houses and everything you own, and will leave you with nothing. Everyone who was present said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the leaders kept their promise. During the twelve years that I was governor of the land of Judah, from the twentieth year that Artaxerxes was emperor until his thirty-second year, neither my relatives nor I ate the food I was entitled to have as governor. Every governor who had been in office before me, had been a burden to the people and had demanded 40 silver coins a day for food and wine. Even their servants had oppressed the people, but I acted differently, because I honoured God. I put all my energy into rebuilding the wall and did not acquire any property. Everyone who asked for me joined in the rebuilding. I regularly fed at my table 150 of Jewish people and their leaders, besides all the people who came to me from the surrounding nations. Every day I served one beef, six of the best sheep and many chickens, and every ten days I provided a fresh supply of wine. But I knew what heavy burdens the people had to bear, and so I did not claim the allowance that the governor is entitled to. I pray you, O God. Remember to my credit everything that I have done for this people. Nehemiah chapter 6 Sinbalat, Tobiah, Keshim, and the rest of our enemies heard that we had finished building the wall and that there were no gaps left in it. Although we still had not set up the gates and the gateways, so Sinbalat and Keshim sent me a message suggesting that I meet with them in one of the villages, in the plain of Ono. This was a trick of theirs to try to harm me. I sent messengers to say to them, I am doing important work and can't go down there. I am not going to let the work stop just to go and see you. They sent me the same message four times, and each time I sent them the same reply. Then, Sinbalat sent one of his servants to me with a fifth message, this one in the form of an unsealed letter. It read, 6. Geshem tells me that a rumor is going around among the neighboring peoples 
that you and the Jewish people intend to rebuild. And that is why you are rebuilding the wall. He also says you plan to make yourself kin and that you have arranged for some prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem that you are the king of Judah. His majesty is certain to hear about this. So, I suggest that you and I meet to talk the situation over. I sent a reply to him. Nothing of what you are saying is true. You have made it all up yourself. They were trying to frighten us into stopping work, I prayed. But now God make me strong. About this time I went to visit Shemaiah the son of Deliah and grandson of Mehetabel who was unable to leave his house. He said to me, You and I must go and hide together in the holy place of the temple and lock the doors because they are coming to kill you. Any night now they will come to kill you. I answered, I'm not the kind of person that runs and hides. Do you think I would try to save my life by hiding in the temple? I won't do it. When I thought it over, I realized that God had not spoken to Shemaiah, but that Tobiah and Sinbalad had bribed him to give me this warning. They hired him to frighten me into sinning so that they could ruin my reputation and humiliate me. I prayed, God, remember what Tobi and Sinbalad have done and punish them. Remember that woman, Noadia, and all the other prophets who tried to frighten me. After 52 days of work, the entire wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul. When our enemies in the surrounding nations heard this, they realized that they had lost faith, since everyone knew that the work had been done with God's help. During all this time, the Jewish leaders had been in correspondence with Tobiah. Many people in Judah were on his side because of his Jewish father-in-law, Shekania, son of Ara. In addition, his son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshullam, son of Barakia. People would talk in front of me about all the good deeds Tobiah had done and would tell him everything I say. And he kept sending me letters to try to frighten me. May the Lord bless us abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.